Hi everyone, my name is Anton. Yolo Day 11 is out, so it's time to make another video on my channel. And I'm a little bit bored shooting videos with all these different Yolos. Because in general, the main idea behind all these videos, it's not about Yolos, it's about how efficient they are for a different products. And the main idea behind these videos is usually the same. But anyway, let's go through YOLO V11 and check all benefits and all bad things about this specific version. Let's look at this great success. Does it work much better? It's up to you to decide. But let me remind you a few fun facts. Ultralytics, it's not a research group. It's commercial organization, so the main idea behind all this is doing profit. And of course, there is no aggressive article about YOLO V11. There is no architecture of YOLO V11. There is just this one picture with new version of YOLO, like plus one to the previous popular model. And the idea is that we are better than previous one. So this is the main idea behind YOLO V11. But let's go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, when we, we are speaking about ultralytics, it's the model for your solution, the first thing we need to think about is the license. And the price of the license is a little bit tricky. In my opinion, like I remember, maybe it was previous pricing model, but with previous pricing model, the price for one year license was about one month of salary for pretty qualified researchers. So it's like, reasonable price in my opinion uh, but of course like uh, it doesn't fit for all situations let's go further uh, ultralytics supports tensor rt and open vina expert out of the box of course there are a few different uh, like supports but in general it's not like a big amount of different devices and uh, optimized architecture so even on YOLO Vision presentation that was like a few days ago, only one hardware vendor on this presentation was able to run YOLO V11. Qualcomm was not able to run it. Maybe it's an easy export. And in my opinion, it should be pretty easy because I checked the mm, Onyx model and it's look pretty similar. So I expect that most of... Uh, specific device will work with this specific model. But right now there is no official support from any vendors, even from vendors that were on uh, YOLO V11 presentations. Uh, look at this graph again. All tests on NVIDIA T4 GPU. It's super old GPU. Of course, when you need to compare all existing models and put them on the same graph, it's easier to take some old, but you know what? The speed can be completely different and these relations between different model can be completely different if you will check the newest model. Uh, some companies, they even like sell optimization for specific NVIDIA GPU. And uh, usually they work pretty nice. Uh, like they just optimize your model specifically for this architecture and it can, you, can give you a big boost. So right now there is no evidence that this model will, look, uh, will run faster than existing models on different uh, GPUs, CPUs and so on. So, and of course, NPUs. We don't know how fast is this model. Of course, there will be some comparison in, you, in the next few months. And I expect that 
it should be a little bit better but um, right now you just if you need to optimize your speed inference there are a lot of different ways to do this and this 20 2% optimization that they mentioned in the documents. It may be not the best optimization ever. Okay, let's go next. Ultralytics uh, have a pretty bad code base. Mm, if you want to modify something inside, probably it's much easier to take different model. If you really want to build your model with different outputs and so on and so on. Uh, but for Ultralytics, when I tried to research a little bit about YOLO V11, it's like the code is a mess. It's exactly the same mess it was like a few years ago. And few of my friends, like in last year, they checked Ultralytics code and it was like not the best code at all. Uh, a lot of config files, um, a hidden structure of this code a little bit, no good documentation about what is happening inside. And it's working, it has pretty good, nice interface outside the code, so you can easily connect it, you can easily use it uh, if you like inside the main pipeline of Intel and NVIDIA usage, everything will be pretty nice. But just don't try to run this on some specific devices and don't try to modify it yourself. Uh, if we look at the presentation video about YOLO V11, we will see that there are three main component of mm, success, at least what Glenn mentioned here. And uh, here are the augmentation. They uh, like append augmentation in this new code, modified loss function, and model modification. I will put link on this time section in the description. Uh, let me stop for a second to discuss these three main points of success. And the first of all, of course, it's augmentations. And uh, once we had a task where our trained model was not performed super well because the dataset was super small. And when we checked the accuracy of the detection of on our validation set, it was around 90%. And we were not able to collect bigger data set and uh, fix all these corner cases. So we just spent like a week and create specific augmentation pipelines with all these corner cases, with all these additional problems. And you know what, the accuracy was increased like, the error was dropped like around 10 times. So the accuracy was around 99%. And it's the main trick of augmentation. Uh, you need to, if you want to boost your accuracy a lot, you need to think about like the structure of error and modify this part specifically for your data set and your corner cases. And it's not the way how you treat augmentation for some general case. So even if you fine tune your model for uh, Coco data set, you definitely can somehow fine tune augmentation, find the uh, right augmentation that will give you maximum accuracy. And of course, it's like the big field of research, how you can fine tune your augmentation for Coco dataset. But do you know what? This augmentation probably will not work for any different task. And of course, like augmentations, uh, which we created and get like 10 time accuracy um, uh, error rate decreasing, they were completely useless for any other task. And it's the main trick. You can, you don't know like if this augmentation will work anywhere. And it's like a really big research when you need to confirm that same new strategy of augmentation will work for different data sets. And for example, when uh, mosaic augmentation for YOLO v4 were were introduced. There was pretty big research on different data sets. And yes, this mosaic augmentation definitely can improve the accuracy for a lot of tasks, but not for everyone. 
it's interesting point and even nowadays we pretty often can like turn off mosaic augmentation because specifically for this task it will not work so uh and it's the main trick with augmentation the second strong point is loss function and i checked the code and it's the same loss function that it was for detection the detection problem for yolo v8 maybe uh, something different in like uh, learning create schedule maybe something different about merging this augmentation during the training maybe something different for like uh, with loss function for like k point task or like for segmentation task but i couldn't see like some big differences in this point and model modification of course there was some model modification i can verify this by just by an annex file but i don't know about like how big they were because there is no like any presentation about architecture and uh of course like you need a uh, real research and comparison like for uh like ablation study about different models different augmentation how important each part so there is no guarantee that uh model modification did some really important and with this like 22% uh, favor parameters than YOLO v8 it's like it's not a big gap and it's more about like some small adjustments to, you need to check where there was so do I recommend YOLO v11 yes but for specific task and specific situation you don't have a big qualified team of AI researchers. Like you don't know anything about models. Just take it. It's like three line of court. It will work somehow out of the box. It will work better than any real open source model out of the box. You can check how it will work for your task. And then if it's okay, you can like pay to ultralytics much smaller amount of money than you will spend like yearly on one researcher so why not it's a great deal and in a lot situation it can work but the main problem if your company will like grow and at some point maybe it will be more cheaper just to switch on some open source model of course it's great if you have like budget if you don't want to hire additional scientists and uh, you want just some simple models that already there so like uh, k-point detection segmentation model uh, detection classification but if you need something more like for example you need detection and depth prediction maybe it's better to check some other models because out of the box it will be super hard to modify yolo v11 to achieve your uh, goals so thank you for watching mm, anyway any release is better than no release so we'll meet you i will meet you in the next video bye